Okay, thank you. Gosh. Anyway, good, <laughs> good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you might be located in the physical world. We have our technical difficulties corrected, I do believe. I hope you're enjoying this conference. It's just the, a great one, the first of the Open Simulator platform. Um, I'm Hope Botterbush. I'm serving as moderator and co-presenter of this session, and it's on using digital badging to promote lifelong learning. This is actually an educator track presentation, but they had a overflow problem, so we're here in the research area. So I hope you're in the right place. Um, um, let's see, I'm a career educator um, with the experience in K-12 classroom teaching, college and university. Uh, I'm a curriculum designer, program manager, and grant writer, all rolled into one. <laughs> the last five years I've been working in the virtual platform where I design sponsored virtual projects and professional development training for educators. Um, my projects have been funded uh, through Kansas State University, NOAA, NASA, and the U.S. Department of State. Um, I create professional development programs for educators in the STEAM X disciplines, that is science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics. Um, the X means that I integrate workforce skills into my programs, and I currently have um, the core of an alternative energy program originally sponsored by the U.S. Department of State set up in Second Life and have trained over 30 teachers so far with this program. Uh, so if you have a group that you'd like to go through the program, just contact me. For this project, we, are, we plan to offer digital badges in wind energy, electricity, and mathematics through James Madison's University Center for Wind Energy and with the help of Penn State University. Before I introduce my co-presenter, I'd like to take a poll of the audience. Uh, please type in chat yes or no. Have you heard of digital badges before? Digital badges is a, not a, a new concept, but it's relatively new to education. Um, I don't see anyone typing, but um, um, I'm going to introduce Chris Gamrat of Penn State University now. And beginning in 2008, Chris started working with what he calls the AESP for the design, development, implementation, and training of technology to support teacher professional development. Chris has worked on major technology support projects for AESP, such as the NASA Educators Online Network and Teacher Learning Journeys. Chris's education background includes a BS in Management Information Systems and an ME Master's in Education in Instructional Systems from Penn State. He's currently pursuing his doctorate in Learning Design and Technology. If you have any questions for Ch uh, Chris, please type them in local chat and we'll get to them uh, as soon as we can. So take it away, Chris. Great. Thank you very much. I just want to make sure that everybody can hear me. Well, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, I'll take I'll I'll take your word for it. Um, so I'm really happy to be here to talk about digital badging. It's something that I've gotten really into and really excited about in the past, um, probably about two years. Um, we've been really doing a lot of cool uh, things with that at Penn State, and I just wanted to uh, jump into the presentation here. So let me know if you see slide two. Okay, so this is just a quick overview of what I plan on talking about today. So first I'm going to do a uh, discussion on what digital badges are. Uh, since it's a relatively new thing, I'm going to talk about what's going on in the field. So who's using digital badges, who's interested in them, that sort of thing. And uh, then what, what I've been working on, uh, which, will, which will be two different projects that I'm doing here at Penn State. Um, and then I'll also give a tour of Teacher Learning Journeys, which is the uh, national project that I'm working on um, with NASA. So let's jump on in. Okay, so uh, 
introduction to digital badges. Digital ba uh, badges used to be these things that Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts would get. They'd be kind of this sewn patch that would go onto a sash or something like that. And uh, they represented different learning achievements, different participation achievements. So I went to this uh, workshop, I went to this conference, I went to this jamboree. Um, those are things that they really kind of represented. I, I, you know, for example, I learned how to tie knots, and these are these are representations that badges <coughs> were really good at. Um, now badges are becoming digital, so they're they're becoming this clickable representation of learning achievements or, or uh, uh, participation in professional development, and so this has uh, really generated a lot of potential. Um, in the areas of K-12 education and higher education, um, additionally in, in vocational training as well. Um, so really starting to explore a lot of those different options and opportunities. Uh, in particular, I'm looking at uh, teacher professional development. Go to the next slide. So I'm looking at teacher professional development specifically in the, in the STEM field. Um, so, and, and that's really what NASA has a lot of interest in. And so we want to be able to provide uh, resources and workshops and conferences uh, through NASA and be able to uh, kind of create these, these representations of this professional development. So then teachers can keep track of their, their activities and then go back to their administration and say, this is what I've done and, and these are the advancements that I'm making for my students, for my classroom and that sort of thing. And uh, in in teacher in the world of teacher professional development, it's also really closely linked to um, keeping up certifications. In terms of you know, uh, of every so many years, they'll they'll be required to uh, renew their teaching certification. It's also linked back to uh, teacher compensation. So those are uh, being able to track this for this sort of learning uh, is really important to them. Um, it's also useful in, in student field experiences. So here at Penn State there are a number of opportunities that students can can engage in their, their uh, trips that, where they go to Jamaica or South Africa or uh, trips that, out onto um, research vessels and in, um, into the sea or or to uh, different parts of the uh, different parts of the world. Um, so those are another really great way of capturing experiences and it's something that's really not um, it, it's not part of a transcript. Um, the other thing is is internships. Internships are really difficult to really kind of summarize. You know, you could say, "Oh, I spent the summer with Microsoft or Xerox or something like that." But what does that really mean to an employer? Uh, and also, is really great. Uh, digital badges are also really great for HR sorts of training. So internal uh, training and and uh, and and the tracking of it becomes really powerful and allows for and allows for not only not only being able to keep track of what you've learned at a, specific, at a specific job, but also being able to move across uh, an organization and being able to keep track of uh, what you've learned or, or being able to move out of that organization to another place and have still having a uh, representation of, of the skills that you know. So let's jump to... So I'm going to just dive into the the uh, components of a digital badge that I think are really the most important. Uh, the first of which is that the metadata is baked in. So that what does that mean? It's it really represents uh, this idea that digital badges have more to them than just this physical, uh, you know, just this physical thing or just this image. Um, so I'm going to use the example of interview a physicist, which is one of the ones that we have in teacher learning journeys. So metadata baked in really represents this opportunity to insert all sorts of different information related to that learning experience. And I'm not sure if the slides are loading slowly for me, if they're loading slowly for everyone, so I'm just trying to put in a little bit of pause in case, that, in case it's loading slowly for everyone else. I um, do see so, your next slide. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one that should have the arrows sticking out from it? Yes. Okay, great. So. In this, you can you can really capture a lot of really valuable information. So, uh, first example is a, is issuer. So this is this is coming from the the NASA Aerospace Education Services Project. It's coming from Penn State University. So those really have a lot of weight to them. Uh, in addition to that, it includes the criteria for earning the badge. So it's a, a detailed explanation of what was involved for somebody to earn this 
this particular badge. Um, and beyond that, there's evidence. So there's each badge requires certain types of evidence. So sometimes it's a, a written reflection, sometimes it's an uploaded document, sometimes it's a URL to a video or, or a, you know, an audio clip. Uh, in addition to that, there's also the set, an, an assessment piece. So you can actually capture not only what you the evident the uh, the artifact of the learning that you've created, but also the evidence of of the assessment. So feedback that you received um, from uh, from an expert in the field, and and in, and in, as well as uh, data issued and a number of other pieces of of metadata associated with it. So this becomes really valuable because as an employer, when somebody comes comes in with a, a list of badges, they're then able to see so much more about what uh, what the learner has been has been engaging in and what and you know really get a good sense of uh, what they're able to do. Um, so this becomes something that's that's really kind of enhances um, you know, uh, really enhances that access to information and really, really cre creates this transparency, which is what I want to talk about on the next slide if it loads. Here we go. Okay, so so in transparency, so here's an example. This is this is actually a, a subset of my uh, transcript from last fall. So I don't. If you can see that it says I I took a, a IST five twenty five and the the name of the course is CSCW. Well, that's not really very meaningful, and it doesn't really give me a lot of information. The only thing, the only other piece of information that you might have with that is a letter grade, and you know if you're it, for me to apply to a job, that that really doesn't help the employer understand what I know about what I know about that topic, what I got out of that class, or really anything else. So being able to have like, these associated badges really allows for um, significant significant awareness of the uh, from the perspective of the employer, but also from the perspective of the uh, from the learner as well, because it, it becomes this really great um, repository of information of, of all of your accomplishments over time. And that really allows for this this sort of ongoing portfolio of lifelong learning, and that's really kind of the idea that's that's been in the works, um, at, not only at here at Penn State but also at a number of number of different organizations across the world. Um, for example, Mozilla is working on what they're calling the, the digital backpack, and the the idea is that the, it's this open this open structure that allows anybody out there who's who's creating and issuing badges to be able to upload their badges and put them into this, this digital backpack. So it becomes not only a portfolio of things that I've earned from Penn State, but also things that I've earned directly from NASA, things that I've earned from the Smithsonian and, and a number of other organizations that offer uh, different learning experiences. So it really becomes this really nice, uh, clean way of organizing and keeping track of information. In, in addition to just being able to import your badges, it also allows you to kind of group them, kind of like a a uh, Pinterest setup or or folder setup where you can put them into different categories and really assemble them into different sort of types of portfolios, and that really adds a lot of value because then you can you can direct employers to specific subset portfolios of you know these are my uh, learning design badges and I'd really like you to check those out. I have other badges in in uh, you know different things, but you know they're they're less important to my job and more kind of a hobby. Um, so that that's really kind of a nice functionality. <coughs> so uh, more on the the Mozilla is really working to create this opportunity um, for people to be able to upload, issue, um, and and display their badges. So this and and in this structure, there there are tools and functionality for creating badges. So uh, the, it seems as though they're adopting another badge platform that has been has grown significant in popularity. It's called badge.us, badge B-A-D-G dot U-S. Um, and that's really a platform that, that was out, has been out for over, well over a year now, and it's has really gained, grown in popularity. It seems as though that they're taking over because it, um, from what I can tell, it looked like it was really owned and operated by one person. Um, and you know to really create a robust system you need to have 
um, a number of people working on it and being able to incorporate it into that. And I think that that's it's really going to grow. It also allows for, um, and that was one also one of the first systems. Type the link in the chat. Yes, I can do that. Okay, never mind that backslash. Uh, and it also includes a lot of tools for displayers. So in, in the near future, there's going to be the ability to display earned badges in Facebook, in LinkedIn, in other uh, tools that are out there and, and you know, allows you to you know, really kind of incorporate this in, into, into your social life. So what's going on with digital badges? So I talked a little bit about mm -hmm. Mozilla. Mozilla is heavily involved in the badging platform. I'm really looking to um, share this with uh, with the international community. There are a lot of people that are very interested in it. But there are a number of people, a um, uh, number of competitions and grants uh, that are really trying to advance and trying to advance digital badging. So for for example, uh, this digital media and learning competition. This this happened a little over a year ago, and they were they they had award awarded about thirty three grants to investigate digital badging and a number of different learning opportunities, um, and uh, they should have a lot of information about that since since it's been over a year. I believe the grants were about a year long, and so they should be starting to post information about um, what were the the results of of uh, those grants. So, and this is a collaboration between Haystack, um, which is uh, a, a an educational group, uh, the the MacArthur Foundation, Mozilla, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So, there's a lot of really large and very interested groups looking into digital badging um, from all across, really from all across the United States. So, I think the all the participants in this were were U.S. Um, U.S. institutions. But in addition to that, there are also a number, a number of other groups. So there's the Smithsonian. They've really started to push out a, a, a badge, with a badging platform, which is mostly aimed at uh, children, I would say. Um, but I think that they're also trying to uh, include things that are for adults as well. Um, there's the uh, NASA Airspace Education Services Project, which is my home project. Um, we've been um, we've been issuing badges for over a year now, and and really started to. Um, increase the availability for that at, with student with uh, teachers. Um, we have probably about 80, 80 some different badges that are available for for teachers to earn. Um, and uh, in addition to in addition, there's also um, the Purdue Passport. Uh, Purdue. Purdue ha is really one of the the biggest presences in terms of universities offering. Um, Offering a badging platform right now. It's also it's also integrated with their course management system, and it's really become something that I think is going to um, quickly uh, gain po gain popularity at at Purdue and probably at other universities. And then, uh, so when I say as, and soon Penn State. So Penn State is really starting to to get their feet wet with this. Uh, you can see the the very last image is a guy with a beard. Uh, that's one of the that's the PI for the aerospace education. Education Services Project, Dr. Kyle Peck, and he's really been interested in, in using digital badges um, in a number of different applications, both in higher education but also in K in K twelve platforms as well. Um, and I am also, in addition to working with NASA, I'm also the PI for the Lifelong Learning Landscape, which is uh, a Penn State implementation of digital badging platform. That's something that I think is is really going to be interesting. Um, we're get just about ready to start piloting this this platform um, for the fall semester, and you know, I'm hoping that we'll be able to collect collect a, a lot of really good data, uh, do some interviews, talk with some um, faculty and and students about how um, how they're interested in using digital badges, what the what sort of adoption looks like, what what's motivation look like, um, and really start to be better understand digital badges from that perspective. So there's a lot of impacts uh, related to digital badges already. There are a number of news articles out there. So U.S. News, 
uh, CBS. There's, there's just a lot of uh, a, a flurry of um, discussion on it. I, I would, if if digital badges hadn't come out at almost the same time as MOOCs, I would have said that the digital badges really really would have been the story, but it seems as though they're, they've been a little bit overshadowed. Um, I also suspect that they're going to, they're in some places, they're going to converge. I can see a lot of applications for digital badges within the context of MOOCs, and I think that that's something that'll be really interesting to see um, in the near future. So, in hope, I just wanted to check with you. I hope you're keeping an eye on the time because um, it's hard for me to do that. <laughs> Yes, Chris, we're just a little after one. We're good. Okay, good. Okay. I'm having a really hard time with this podium. I have to click it uh, like three or four times for it to go advance to the next slide. Um, so who's interested in badges here at, P at Penn State? So there, first of all, there's a new center here that's called the Center for Online Innovation and Learning, and that has become this uh, organization that's really starting to, uh, pr uh, to support internal grants here at Penn State um, uh, across a number of different um, number of different digital learning platforms, and really trying to be kind of a um, you know almost kind of like a venture capitalist uh, group for. Um, innovations in online learning. It's really something that's helping to support that. The Penn State libraries are really interested in it, being able to support that for uh, every year thousands of students come into the libraries to learn how to use it, uh, to learn to really understand how to access not only the not only the thousands of books that they have but also all the journals and all of the other online resources and so that that really becomes a, a great training opportunity which can be used in, in digital badging. The Alumni Career Services is, is very fascinated about it because they're they're looking at it from the perspective of future employers and really being able to help sell uh, Penn State students to uh, to other employers out once once they graduate, and um, we're also looking at it from the perspective of continuing education. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for learning once you leave college. Um, I know that I've been learning ever since I left, and I feel like uh, you know I, that's not going to stop anytime soon. So being able to capture that sort of learning is is I think is going to be really important. Um, in addition to that, there's just a lot of other organizations here at Penn State that are they are very interested in, it. and I think that those applications are are not just not Penn State specific. I mean, a lot of a lot of universities, a lot of K twelve institutions, and I think even a lot of corporate organizations are going to be interested in very similar applications to badges. And it, and in particular, this is really what I'm interested in is is looking at the diversity of, of adoptions and implementations and trying to you know, better understand that. Okay, I just noticed there's, there's some chat here. Yeah. Okay, Ruby wants to talk, so okay. No, Chris, she's just chatting with Beth. Go ahead. Okay. So, there's a couple of things that I'm looking at right now that are that are really kind of related to some of the research that I'm doing with badges. So the first is is individualization or personal personalization. So often um, in in classrooms and professional development training, really there's there uh, one size doesn't fit all. And there's I just noticed that there's too many apostrophes and t's on that slide, so I apologize for that. But one size really doesn't fit all. It really um, it sometimes you need to specialize and there needs to be a lot of um, uh, the ability for people to just make decisions about their learning and take ownership of it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of literature that says that um, by having uh, having more ownership and having no responsibility um, allows for greater engagement and um, you know and and I, I, I would hesitate to say results in more learning but I feel like that it probably does. Um, and right now, I'm, I'm looking at a lot of uh, personalization literature. I'm really trying to dig into um, a lot of what we've been capturing and looking at um, related to how people are using their how people are using their professional development time. It also means kind of this opportunity for for uh, uh, this Goldilocks 
style of professional development. So in, the, in traditional professional development, somebody comes in, they do a workshop, and um, for a, a small number of people, it's it's just right. It's exactly what they need. But there are a lot of other people. There are a lot of people on either end that are saying that this is way too much. You know, I just started. I don't. You know, I I need to figure out um, how to write a lesson. You know, how to get my lesson plans together. You know, I don't have. I I'm not ready for this this sort of uh, workshop. And then there's some people who you know have been have been around for a long time. Um, they really they're really incredible teachers and it's just it's just not enough for them they're they're left bored uh you know counting down the minutes until they can leave so it really makes sense to be able to offer um individualized professional development for especially for educators because they're just their needs are so different and being able to utilize their time uh which they uh which is you know really stretched already um really allows for uh you know some, some significant benefits so teachers can really get get what they need, get what they and and be able to utilize it for their students in their classroom, rather than sitting in a sitting in a con, you know a conference room or sitting in an auditorium and and you know hoping that they can get one or two things out of the workshop that they're sitting through. So, at this point, I'm going to um, I'm going to stop and see if there are any questions. And if not, I will start on the uh, teacher learning journeys uh, tour. If anyone has any questions, you can type them in chat. But I also have a few um, on on um, from other people, Chris. If if our audience doesn't have any, okay. Or we can always, if there aren't any questions now from the audience, we can always save them for later. Yeah, just go ahead. Okay, so a teacher learning journey. We have journeys. about ten minutes, Chris. Okay, so I'll I'll uh, I'll speed through this pretty quick. Um, teacher learning journeys was a collaboration between um, the Aerospace Education Services Project and uh, the Na uh, NSTA, the National Associ uh, National Science Teachers Association. You know, I just saw a whole bunch of chat go by and then it disappeared. So I, I have no idea what the uh, what was being said. So I hope I hope you uh, hope I hope you we are able to read that. Yes, I'm I'm reading it. They're just pretty much chatting. Uh, it's okay. Okay. Um, so we designed it. We decided to create this system and really give it a um, the idea of uh, of a a journey feel. So a lot of a lot of our analogies are kind of based on travel. Uh, on a travel metaphor. So teacher learning journeys has uh, different different aspects such as an itinerary where you're able to kind of plot out your activities, a, a log book where you're able to you know capture and, and, and retrieve reflections um, from different activities that you've completed and we also decided that you know these this, this the badge metaphor uh, made a lot of sense because oftentimes you're picking up you know uh, uh, it's not as common anymore, but people, a lot of people used to get those stickers on their luggage that would say like London or Paris and uh, uh, Cairo, that sort of thing. And, and you'd, you'd accumulate those, but you also accumulated these, this idea of these stamps. So the, uh, like on a passport, you'd go through, you'd go through a country, you get your passport stamped, and then you really kind of get that, that sort of recognition of you made it through. Um, and really, we kind of wanted to be able to create that in teacher learning journeys. And so we broke, um, so more to come on that. Uh, we also wanted them to create this this goal setting uh, step. So that allowed them to, you know, really define their goals and say what they wanted to, wanted to get out of this particular journey. Um, a lot of teachers were were very interested in, in that idea, and it really helped them to kind of focus on their professional development and get exactly what they needed for a particular school year or semester, um, whatever the case may be. Um, so they can go ahead and set that, and then then we ask them to search for different activities. So we have a number of different content areas. We have five different uh, st strands of content in there right now, and hoping to add more in the near future. Um, we also have a number of different hours. So a lot of teachers will be able to say like, okay, well, you know, we have like uh, a 
free uh, Friday because there's there's no school. So I've got some time to do some PD. Um, what can I do? So I've got, you know, let's say, six hours that I can. So I can. So teachers can go into the system and really select things that make sense for their needs. So in in terms of of both hours and content area, and that's uh, that. That really adds for a lot of nice flexibility. When teachers um, find what they yes, uh, Chris, Chris, can I just jump in a minute? Um, sure. We have a question from the UStream group. <clears throat> These are people watching online rather than in world. Angelique, okay. global coach, has asked: Will MOOCs offer these badges as well? Um, I have heard of several MOOCs that are looking into that. Uh, I know Penn State is offering, Penn State right now has is has set up five different MOOCs that they're offering, um, two of which have completed, but I know that they're looking into the possibility of incorporating MOOCs into um, a couple, into some of the future ones. I know that there's a climate change one um, that I've had some uh, preliminary conversations with um, so I do, I do see that as a as a definite uh, possibility in in probably the near future. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head that are doing it right now, um, but I wouldn't be surprised at all. Thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. So uh, back to the tour. Were there any other questions? Well, we have some other questions, but um, you have about oh uh, ten, maybe five more minutes. Okay, so um, so teachers are able to incorporate all the all their um, learning activity goals into this itinerary, which they can then uh, click on, uh, which then they can uh, look at and decide on when when they want to get started. Um, it also provides a lot of really nice scaffolding in this in this getting started um, section, which really lays out the description and the the tasks involved in in being able to get recognition for a particular activity. And so once they're ready to get started, they can go out and do the activity, which is typically uh, watch, uh, uh, watch a video, engage in a couple in in different uh, websites or activities, go and do uh, create something in their classroom, uh, work with different people out in the out in the field, um, and then we ask them to go and create uh, create a, lo a log. Um, and the log for the activity typically is a reflection of the activity, and oftentimes something. Uh, some sort of additional media associated with it. So that might be a lesson plan, it might be a video, it might be you know uh, some sort of like audio stream, it might be screen captures of using different sorts of tools. But it really gives them um, you know a lot of supporting evidence for their their participation in in, in learning uh, professional development. So once they complete the logs, they can request this, these stamps and badges. Um, and at a, at this point, the um, Stamps really re represent kind of a lower level recognition, so it's really something that's just, just kind of that uh, paragraph worth of reflection of, I thought this was good and I, th I think I might use it. Uh, badges really represent this a, a, a much more uh, practice changing media creation sorts, sorts of activities. Um, and finally, we offer the ability for them to create reports and um, and this allows them to pull out all sorts of different information, which includes, um, which includes an executive summary, which totals the uh, number of hours completed, number of badges awarded, and different types of badges. Uh, in addition, also ones that are being that are under review, and all of these badges are currently being reviewed by NASA uh, education experts. Um, so they also get a, a very high quality feedback. Um, and then finally, we give we give them the opportunity to generate. Uh, PDF versions of uh, certificates, which they can then print out. Um, so this is really high-level summary. It includes just number of badges and stamps, and includes the the uh, date um, that they access that sort of information. And, um, and I believe that we've reached the time. So I've I have a few questions. If you'd like me to answer these, um, or if there are other questions for, from the audience, I'd be happy to answer those. I'd like to answer. Uh, questions from the audience first. I'll give you the, because I think that's the most interesting. <laughs> okay, if you'll type your questions in the local chat, we'd appreciate that. Otherwise, we do have a few questions uh, from other people, um, from Ustream and other sources. 
<clears throat> I noticed that um, there was some discussion about how our li audit librarians in the audience were going to use di uh, digital badging in their programs during the school year. So that, that's a great application, um, I believe. And one of the questions um, that was asked is, uh, is this, is, are badges a threat to higher ed, you know, the grading system in higher ed? Do you think, Chris? Um, I, I suspect that, that digital badges are not a threat to um, grading in higher ed. And I, and I attended a recent presentation by Kyle Bowen, um, who is a badging advocate over at Purdue and really uh, the person responsible for creating the wonderful uh, Purdue passport system. And he, he really pointed out that grades kind of are badges already. Um, they provide a small amount of metadata associated with this learning activity, and that's really that's really what badges are. I think the the benefit to badges is really that it's kind of an enhancement of the existing transcript um, concept. Um, so I I really see them actually becoming kind of more merged than anything else. Oh, that's an excellent point. Definitely, um, along that line. Um, what do you say to the people who are skeptics about digital badging? So, um, a lot of uh, different. Um, I have had some skeptics um, in the college, uh, in uh, across the university here at Penn State, and a lot of them have really said, you know, I, I get it for, for 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 professional development. I get it for. Um, you know these different like outside of class sorts of uh, um, recognition, but I don't really see why uh, w what the value is to um, coursework, and so I think that that it's important to really represent say that it, it does represent a lot more to uh, to students to employers um, than than really the transcripts currently provide. Um, there's just not that it, there's just very little information in transcripts, and it's. Uh, I, I think that any benefit that um, any benefit that um, a, a a job a you know, job seeker can really kind of make themselves um, unique to an employer, I think has value, and I think that that's really where where the where badges um, are going to um, you know are going to uh, kind of find their place in the sun. Mm -hmm. um, I think I I really. F I really think that that, that value, um, that additional information is really going to help people, help employers separate out who they're looking for and who they want to interview. And I think that that, that, that additional information um, is, is going to do it. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. And, and that's why I incorporate workforce skills into my professional development where digital badging will fit quite nicely there. Um, Ruby in our audience has asked, do you know of virtual worlds that are using the badge or stamp applications. What I like about this is that the badge grade is more meaningful to everyone, including parents who forget the assignments and only remembered the grade. <laughs> and she has a frowny face there. Well, I yeah. know just from my perspective, Ruby, that I am I am going to be offering digital badging and Chris is going to help with that. But what's your response, Chris? Um, I haven't heard of too much in in terms of um, virtual worlds using uh, digital badging. Although I can't say that there's there's not in some perspectives there's not a big difference between digital badges and other sorts of like uh, in in game or gamification types of achievements. Um, I know that that's that's actually really common in in different in different sorts of simulations and and, and games. Um, although I will say that there is. Uh, there is an important distinction um, in in you know in some aspects gamification and badges are kind of the same thing but also point out that that there's uh, really kind of this learning representation which I think is the um, uh, a lot of people like to call um, micro credentialing and the the micro credentials really are what what's representing the learning achievements um, there are a lot of other achievements, like oh, you, you know, you unlock this character, or you know, you were able to get this certain score. Um, those aren't really necessarily 
kind of like skill acquisition or learning uh, learning knowledge acquisition types of badges. And I think that there, it's important to kind of separate them out sometimes. Um, so I do see it happening, but I don't, uh, you know, in, in virtual worlds and games and that sort of thing, but I don't see that sort of um, micro-credentialing going on yet. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, along uh, the, you know, the skeptical area question, we have, um, aren't badges just another educational fad? Um, what do you I, think? So I, I'm going to go back and point to the, the comment I made earlier about how I, I think that they're really going to end up merging with, um, with transcripts. And uh, badges are even even from the perspective of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, I mean, badges have lasted for a really long time. Nobody said no one has come up with a idea to replace that. And um, from from that perspective, I feel like that sort of representation seems to make sense. People get it. Uh, it you know, there's there's sort of kind of this weight to it. And I think that higher ed has has a um, this really interesting capability of incorporating new ideas and new technologies into the way it works. And I think that that's mostly the uh, what's likely to happen with badging. I think it's going to be incorporated into um, you know into transcripts, into e-portfolios, um, which is something that's that's become really popular um, in in education. And I think that that that's really kind of where it's going to live. Um, from the perspective of higher education. I think probably oh. the same, something similar will be true in, in K-12 as well. Okay, great. And our final question is, um, are there standards that exist for digital badges? Have any standards been set? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, the Mozilla Group is working with a number of different uh, interested stakeholders and parties um, in setting setting standards for these and and while it's it's fairly limited right now um, so description uh, date issuer evidence criteria that sort of thing um, it is starting to grow and they're also starting to include a couple of really interesting ideas like um, badging levels uh, so I'm not exactly sure uh, what sorts of uh, applications or if these levels are going to be across all badges uh, but the idea of, of being able to say and and I think we kind of captured that a little bit in teacher learning journeys, that this badge is not worth as much as this other badge. I think that that's a really interesting and probably an important distinction because at some point that, that that's going to be important um, for employers when they're looking at badges. They it's it's easy that for them to become very overwhelmed um, with potentially hundreds or thousands of badges. So how do you kind of eliminate that well I think that um, you know both these levels and and into some some respect it's going to be important for the uh, badge earner to really be able to weed out and, and display what's most important to them and what they think is most likely to get them that next job mm -hmm. Well, Chris, that was uh, really fascinating. Um, I'm I'm on board for badges, and I hope other people, uh, as they learn about them, will be as well. It's time to wrap up our session. Uh, I'd like to remind the audience and those people on Ustream that uh, there's a conference break coming up next. Um, you can. Uh, they're recommending that you close out your um, your your computers. Um, clear your cache, um, and then come back in later. Um, we thank you for listening, and thank you for your time, and enjoy the rest of the conference. The schedule can be found at conference.opensimulator.org. Thanks so much, and thank you, Chris. Thank you for attending, everyone.